We have not done an episode that is solely Nintendo before. Nope. And the logo has Mario in it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Park Stop Podcast, episode 20. <laughs> my name is Alicia Stella. With me as always is my co-host Ian. Hey kids, Alicia can't make it through one of these without laughing. <laughs> I kind of almost did. You can hear it though. You can hear me <laughs> smiling. Um, today we are talking about Super Nintendo World. Uh, we finally got some official information from Universal Studios Japan. And we spent all afternoon translating it, right? <laughs> yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> they actually, it turns out they put out their press releases in English. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> we just missed that last time. I was just, just trying to get some credit, some extra credit for the hard work that we put into this. So this is our first um, regular episode of 2020. In Japanese. Wait. Welcome to a new year. Well, we did a we did a premium episode where we talked about uh, we recapped 2019 and we talked about our predictions for 2020 and stuff. But that's on Patreon. Yeah, it was fun. That was a good time. It was. I was going to say we should do it more often, but we really have to wait till the year ends. Yeah, that would that be helpful. Kind of <laughs> Here's our favorite things that happened this month. <laughs> oh, that would be a lot. That would be rough. That's what that would be. So to jump right into it last night, which was this morning in Japan, technically, because they're ahead of us. Yeah, have fun with that. <laughs> Universal announced new details for a Super Nintendo World opening this summer. That you read? I read? You read? We don't have to read the whole thing. I don't want to read the whole press release because that would be like the whole show. But they, they, they briefly touched on like an overall stuff. They didn't really talk about the rides at all. Mm. Uh, I was kind of surprised. They kind of focused the whole, like they had a press... Uh, media event and they focused the whole thing about interactive experiences but i did i did like that they actually acknowledged that there's a restaurant i think that's the first time that they mm. ever said a restaurant so it says like it will be filled with incredibly it'll be filled with incredibly fun rides shops a restaurant and interactive gameplay throughout the land and so I saw, that made me happy i saw yoshi already that made me happy we're good they didn't mention Yoshi, I don't think by name, but they did mention Mario Kart. I saw Yoshi, so it's okay. Yes. They kept showing the concept art, but we got some good uh, aerial footage and uh, photos of construction. Because now that they like fully announced it, the local news people kind of started get going to get their own footage. So we got some good aerial shots. That's awesome. Descended upon everything with cameras. Yeah. It always happens this way that like... As soon as something's press released to like actually announced, especially something that's opening this year in just, you know, like six months, mm. uh, that's when the the actual real news people, the local news start picking it up. So what did we learn exactly? Because I am curious and I did not get to catch up on everything that you caught up on because some of us have to sleep. <laughs> I was going to say I've been eat, sleep and, and <laughs> um, dreaming about like just for... Uh, the last 20 hours, it's nothing but Nintendo stuff. Just 20 hours? So, that's it? Yeah. I'm like <laughs> manic at this point. I've completely <laughs> lost all semblance of time. I, th I think the, the big news is the power-up band. Yeah. That was something that we were trying to figure out what they were going to do, and they came up with the power band as a solution of something we asked about, right? Basically. Yeah, because we talked about... You know, it's been a long-standing rumor that you'll be able to punch bricks and earn coins, and there'd have to be some way to keep scores and to um, compare your scores for things around the land and the rides itself. So, uh, the Power Up Band, as it's called, makes sense. But it's not just the Power Up Band. There's also the mobile app that goes along with it, which will track your scores and how many coins you've collected. And here, let's read from the official release, the Power Up Band and the mobile app. This will allow them to have interactive experiences, making use of their arms, hands, and entire bodies as they explore the new area, making them feel as if they are truly part of the video game world. <laughs> so I want to know what happens if you punch the question mark and you get the invincible star <laughs> and you just run through and destroy everybody in your way. It's no. terrifying. How just does that work? Accidentally, just murdering people as you run past them. Do you just start flashing and like? <laughs> you can't do that. It's a public place. While wearing a power up band, guests can hit a real oh, life question God. block and collect coins, just like in the video game. Now they they mentioned the question mark 
block. And they showed, um, they even had one set up. So after the event, the members of the media could go and they all were given the wristband, punch um, it. one with Mario and they, yeah, they could punch it. Punch it. And it, it makes the sound and it lights up when you interact with it, which is pretty cool. Um, I have to wonder if it's hard plastic and how hard people are going to be busting their knuckles on it. Or if there's like a foam, I got to believe there's a foam at the bottom. Cause there's like a round section that you punch. So I would hope that it's foam. Um, <laughs> you could technically just tap the mat, like the the power up band to the the connect point, the RFID. You don't really need to punch it, but people look really happy. Like they they were really getting a kick out of punching it. So of course they did. It looks fun. Why do they want to punch those things? <laughs> and um, so now we we have talked about this before. But it's not just like going off script and out of the press release. It's not going to be just question mark blocks, but there'll also be brick blocks, like regular brick blocks. And you won't know which ones might have coins in it. So people will be going from every brick block to every brick <laughs> block and just punching them randomly. And you have Everyone. to wonder if like, you know, you could get up to six coins or whatever if you punch a brick block rapidly but you only get one or three if you do it slowly. So everyone's going to go up to every brick block and be like, bup, 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 bup. oh, nope, that wasn't one. <laughs> oh, man, every- yeah, just going to walk through and everyone's going to be throwing fists is what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Fist flying. <laughs> By the time it comes to the States, we won't even have the interactivity anymore because there's too many bloody noses from people trying to punch pow blocks. Ridiculous. Um, I think there's going to be bouncy music note blocks too which are like my favorite from the games. <laughs> I, w- I have to wonder if they make different musical note sounds. Like every interactive kids area always has something that makes different music. Uh, music note blocks would be the perfect opportunity for that. But also you can hide coins in that. I think there's going to be P blocks. <laughs> that sounds funny. <laughs> oh, yes, that does. Sound fun. I'm not touching that one. The, uh. the, the ones like. Where you knock it over and then coins appear out of nowhere. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I'm just not making the joke because it's oh, okay. too easy for me. Yeah, that's cool. So they're gonna have all that stuff, including the hidden, the hidden punchable blocks that give you coins, so hidden coins. Yeah, it's just gonna be like walking through like a. It's gonna be like walking through a gauntlet. Everyone just throwing fists. It's gonna be great. <laughs> and just in the background, you just hear ta ding, ta ding, ta ding, ta ding, ta ding, ta ding, ping, 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 ta ding, 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 ping, ping. Three dimensional sound all around you of just punching and coin collecting. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> all right. So what's on the app besides that? Is there anything else besides the power band and the app? The, the app connects to the power band. What else is on the app? Anything? Well, um, going back to the press release, there are all kinds of ways to earn coins throughout the entire land, and guests can keep score, compete against each other, and celebrate together when they win. So, like, I like that. So, like, celebrate together. It's like right in the middle of that <laughs> sentence, they're like, they can compete against each other. And at the end, the end of the sentence, and then celebrate together. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. Sounded like you were pitting us against one another in the middle there. Uh, you said compete against each other, and I was just thinking maybe you can punch your neighbor and get extra points or something. Mm. Uh, there's not coins in the people. <laughs> you need to get off of that. You can't punch people. There's <laughs> only one way to find out if there's a coin in the person. You have to punch them. <laughs> It'd be neat if like uh, like Nintendo Power Guide type style um, books came out, like how to earn extra points in <laughs> Super Nintendo World. <laughs> It's like, here's a secret. I think there'll also be ways to defeat bad guys like Goombas and Koopa Troopas. And the app will be neat because it'll not only track in co- like how many coins you've collected overall, but it also track um, achievements. That's interesting. Here, guests can download the Universal Studios Japan app on their smartphones and link it to a power band. Oh, sorry. And link it to a power up band that can be purchased. Yes, that's the important part here. That can be purchased in Super Nintendo World to enhance their experience. The power-up bands are themed to different characters, so guests can select to wear one based on one of their favorite Mushroom Kingdom characters. Thank you, robot announcement lady. Sorry. (laughs) Automated targeting systems active. (laughs) So, in other words, if any of that that I read made any sense at all, these aren't free. (laughs) Shocker. These are not free. There are, as far as I can tell, no free versions. Um, 
They are not magic bands. They are not tapu tapus. They are your, your optional interactive. They're essentially the wands from Harry Potter. You do not need it, but if you want it, you buy it. Awesome. So we're buying them. I need to buy I, one because then I can punch Bobby to see if I get points for that. Any coins? <laughs> Bobby, are you holding coins? <laughs> oh I mean, most people are. If you punch people, you can steal their coins. That's usually how it works. But you might go to jail. You might go to jail. Bobby won't press charges. <laughs> He'll probably be dressed like Minnie Mouse anyway. It'd be fine. So they advertised, um, what was it? One, two, three, six different designs to start. They showed them off. They're, they had um, uh, Mario, Luigi, Princess Peach, Daisy, Toad, and Yoshi. Oh, Yoshi. I know. I really want the Yoshi one. Although the Mario and Luigi ones are really cute because they have like suspender <laughs> pants. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, and They wait. all have eyeballs now that I look at it. <laughs> That's weird. But wait, they're, wait. They're, I, what? I think I'm onto something because you put the original design was a slap design. <laughs> a slap. Yes, it is. The slap bracelet. Yep. Yes. <laughs> I'm telling you, they're just asking. This whole episode is nothing but slapping and punching. <laughs> I'm telling you, Bobby, they're, don't go there with me. <laughs> they they really remind me of the Jurassic World fictional um, scan bands, <laughs> which I have a few. They're they're they're, they're like in the in the first Jurassic World movie. They're like, here, these are your scan bands. They'll get you to the front of the line at all the attractions, and they hand it to. It, it's a slap bracelet that's got rubber coating. Um, rubber wrapped. Yep. And then these though have a big puck in the middle with the RFID in them. I remember those things when I was a kid, everyone used to have those things. Well, like the first slap bracelets were fabric coated and then yep. they made like a paper coated ones. that's just like a sticker on it and you could easily rip it off and then you have the sharpest blade of all time. But newer slap bracelets have a rubber wrapping around them. <laughs> Maybe the coins are inside people. This is a very dangerous podcast. <laughs> now we're talking about the the dangerous blades inside of the the, the power up uh, bands. Uh, so wait, so what else is there to do? I mean, you get the bands, you got to pay extra for them, obviously, and they're going to be slap bracelets, so they're probably not going to last. What do you forever. think? What do you think it would cost? Uh, if, if, like, if this is the only way to interact with the land and to track your scores on the different attractions and the play areas, for a slap, what would you? For a slap bracelet. Slap bracelet what, like, with a puck. 35 bucks. Uh, okay. Actually, that's that's probably that's that would around what I would originally I was thinking twenty four ninety nine. Yeah. But the more I thought about it, the more I'm like, hmm, they could easily bump that up ten dollars and they still sell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they still my, sell. My first instinct was twenty five, but then it's Orlando. It's gonna be Orlando in Japan at a theme park, so ten bucks more. I put it out to Twitter. I did a poll. Uh, today and it just ended and we had 70 774 votes yeah and out of the 800 people or whatever that answered 54 percent said somewhere between 25 and 49 dollars yep. is probably what it's going to cost 27 percent said between 11 and 24 dollars no. and only 3.1 percent said 10 dollars or less yeah of course you gotta pay <laughs> and that. at least 15 percent who thought it would be more than 50 dollars <laughs> which is crazy so it's probably in the real world 25 bucks and then you play that you pay the theme park tax <laughs> that's yeah exactly or like the really basic just the icon ones are 25 and then they have specialty ones like if you really like zelda you have to pay the ten dollar i like zelda tax <laughs> because they, like they do that with magic bands at walt disney world where like most of them are a certain price but then there's the limited edition yeah, I have one which of are those. like the nice ones and they cost more <laughs> So they have, maybe they would cost fifty dollars for the nice ones. Who knows? I have a limited edition Magic Band. Whoopsies. Some of them, some of those Magic Bands, like make the lights do different things or play different music or whatever. Yeah. I've never seen one, but mine does that. So I've heard. Mine does that. Mine at Hollywood Studios. Instead of flashing green, it flashes red and white. Well, whatever. I'm a DVC member. Mine turns pink anyway. Whatever DVC member. There's one so of those they can in this say, house. Welcome home to me. We have a DVC member in this house. Don't come at me with that attitude, ma'am. <laughs> anyway, red and white makes pink. Thank you very much. So <laughs> the po the power up bands, I'm still getting used to saying it, the power up bands yeah. will be sold throughout the land, not just in the main gift shop, but like where the play areas are. Yeah. There's going to be carts. You know, there's going to be like little gift shop windows and and 
like just everywhere you look, you'd be like, you want to play? You want to play? Give us some money. Yeah. Give us some money. <laughs> Probably everywhere there's something you can punch, there's going to be a cart selling them. Exactly. <laughs> like this is this is uh, essentially the wands. Like the wands started out just in Ollivanders oh, and then a cart oh. popped up pretty much everywhere. I'm good with that. Well, it'd be kind of fun, actually, if they had like a one special edition at one specific cart and you hunt for it and make it a little harder on people. <laughs> <laughs> So what we've discussed, though, is probably only half of what the interactive uh, bands do. Mm. Like, there's still more. Um, Because collecting coins is kind of like the main score method, but there's still uh, achievements to collect. Interesting. And key challenges. Let's see. In addition, key challenges will be featured throughout the Super Nintendo World area. By collecting a certain number of digital keys... Guests can cooperate with other guests who also have keys to unlock additional gameplay opportunities, including boss battles against various enemy characters. So you got you can team up. So now we got to do looking for group. I, I yeah, I mean, essentially what they're saying is, and then that paragraph didn't cover it entirely because there's also um, uh, uh, stamps, character stamps, what? which I guess I didn't copy and paste into here. I, I don't see that. Yeah, you have to do little um, little activities throughout the land and earn a stamp. And once you've earned enough stamps and leveled up, then and only then can you go join others in the boss battles. Interesting. Um, so, and essentially, having, what they're saying, what I said, I'm having World of Warcraft flashbacks. Let's get your raid together. <laughs> yes, you 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 have to level up. And then join others to go defeat Bowser Jr. or the Koopalings or some other bad guy. It's kind of insane, but there's like a large attraction that can only be accessed once you reach a certain level or collect a certain number of things. So you could be in the land and... Um, going from mini game to mini game and doing them all, and be like, "Oh man, I gotta leave the land. I gotta go do something else." And there's still an attraction you haven't done yet because you haven't achieved enough to do it, and you have to come back later or another day. And you're as long as you're signed into the app, you'll actually still have your achievement list. That's ridiculous. So what I'm hearing is, is we need to make a looking for group app for this in, in Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> That's what I hear. Well, well, I think what it is is that there's a door that you can't get into until you have a certain whatever, like a certain number of digital keys and yeah. everyone who has those digital keys will be at that door and you just get separated into groups and you work together because it's a group experience. Interesting. So That's... you all work together to defeat the bad guy uh, in the boss battle. And essentially once you've done that, then you've unlocked every mini game there is throughout the land and you can go and, you know, try to beat your scores and do them over again. We're never leaving this land. That's what it sounds like now. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really cool. None of this even has anything to do with Mario Kart, Yoshi, or eventually Donkey Kong. This is all just like the play areas and hidden things throughout the land. And there's one that you'll be able to access that's a long, uh, like, underground area with lots of hidden coins and stuff. That you can go through any time. But the last one with the big boss battle, you can't go to until you've achieved, I think, everything. Interesting. This is interesting. Uh, I can't wait for this now. Um, so wait, I got a question about the bands too. Mm -hmm. Are they like magic bands in any other way? Or I don't just, think so. No? Just Nintendo? Because they're not required. Yeah, that's right. That makes because sense. they're not, because they're something that, <laughs> what's going on with the puppies? They're fighting. No, they're playing. <clears throat> the old one's playing with the one of the little ones. Because they're not required... And they're just, you know, for fun, like the 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 wands in Harry Potter, they can't really be used for things that you would use a magic band for. You're not going to use it for fast pass or virtual queue like a tapu tapu. You're not going to use it for cashless purchases or a room key or a locker key. It's really just for playing in Super Nintendo World. And that's actually kind of refreshing in a way, because, you know, if kids want to play, you get them the whatever. Yeah. I, you know, if they if they ever did a Pokemon land, they got to sell a Pokedex like this is that thing. This is the the way to, you know, be a character in a video game is to have the power up band. That's cool. I'm interested in this now. I'm more interested than I thought I was going to be in this land. I am. It, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say it should come in a box that looks like a fire flower. <laughs> oh, yeah, it definitely should. It definitely should. Or 
or a mushroom. Yeah, or a mushroom, or even just another question mark box or something. But definitely. Well, no, like because you're powering up. It's a power up. It should be a mushroom. Power up. Yeah, it should be a mushroom. Should be a mushroom. Because you can't break a brick block unless you get a mushroom. Mushroom. Okay. So yeah, there's um, and then you know there's other things too that uh. We talked about the possibility of things like hidden Pikmin located around the land. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I have to imagine, like, because the app in, in the screenshots, it showed like a, a map of the whole land and it showed you where all the different achievements could be unlocked by doing the mini games. But there's there might also be like a, a list of all the hidden Pikmin that you have to collect or a list of all of the other hidden stuff or a list of all the bad guys. Like there's gotta be trophies for collecting and uh, defeating everyone. And these are all things you wouldn't be able to do without the, the band. But I also wonder what if the AR binoculars that you look through require the band too? That'd be interesting, but also that wouldn't I be, mean, that, w- that would be cool, but it wouldn't be fun. Cause then it, that, Binoculars could also be a way to like. Well, maybe it would be a way to sell them. I mean, the line would be so long if any if everybody could just use the AR binoculars. And then for those who who don't know, the AR binoculars are like like when we go to a touristy spot like Battery Park and you look through binoculars to look at the Statue of Liberty and you put a quarter in or whatever. These would be like that. But when you look at the land, there's extra characters and stuff added on top so with cool. augmented reality, so... like adding characters jumping around on top of reality through the binoculars and there's several sets of them throughout the land on the second level looking at different areas but i you have to wonder if they're only activated by the power up bands interesting i'm curious now yeah that one i'm not sure but they i i do believe that some of the mini games including the big boss battles Mm -hmm. might use some kind of form of augmented reality and not necessarily like you got to put goggles on, but maybe like the binoculars where you look through them like a periscope and they have like some kind of trigger thing on them where you'd be like battling and firing while looking through at a real set with added stuff on top of it. Hmm. So like imagine playing a mini game where you're like shooting something, but it's in the land, but it's only visible through the binoculars that you're playing with. Interesting. Sounds fun. I don't know if I want that for every boss, but that sounds fun. Well, no, it just might be some of them. I think some of them might be... You know, you find a hidden room and you um, you play like a slot machine thing from Lucky House in Super Mario 3D World, mm-hmm. um, which goes back to the old days of like Super Mario Brothers 3. Yeah. Which they'd have like a little like line up the things or, you know, get three in a row. And this would be like that. We're like get three in a row and get extra coins. So little mini games like that could be fun. You need to do Luigi's Haunted House thing. I remember playing that game on the uh, Wii. I like that game. It's fun. I'm just thinking, like, how cool would it be if the mini games, like, because uh, we've talked about the underground area having the music like old school, yeah, like do 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 do, do 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 do. So, Sign but it. there's music for all of the different types of different things. Like, even the Lucky House has its own like casino music. Yeah, so yeah. maybe like walking into there. <laughs> so, lots of exciting stuff that so you much. you need. Uh- to pay the money for. <laughs> yeah. Here's a power up and I'll keep buying more new ones. Oh, this is cool. This is a lot more stuff than I was even expecting, even after we talked about some of it. That's pretty cool. And it's great to see everyone else get excited about it because it's like stuff that we've kind of been talking about for a while that no one really, like when I say there's play areas on the upper level of this land, everyone's like, oh, who cares? Get to the rides. That's the kid stuff. And it's like, I don't think it's made for kids. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> when I say play areas, I don't necessarily mean like go climbing on nets. This isn't that. Yeah, I'm into it. I'm curious now, like very, very curious. And speaking of the rides, you know, there's still a chance that using the power up bands, you'd also be able to record your scores on the rides if there's some kind of scorekeeping or or you'd earn coins for riding or um, if you like if you're going to use uh, uh, special items like shells and stuff to hurt the other players against you, the other car, because it's two cars racing each other on Mario Kart. So there's a chance that you could get more points. And at the end, if your car wins, you know, that's more point. They do that at Galaxy's Edge for Smuggler's Run, where all the credits you earn actually gets recorded into the Datapad app. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it would be neat to have some kind of like scorekeeping like even if it was especially if you could compare it to everyone else ever i like i think that is the coolest idea if there is a scoreboard that shows where you're ranking 
for everything. That's cool. like it, like where you're ranking on Mario Kart, where you're ranking for the mini games. If you have the highest score for like a little mini game, like that would be neat. Yeah. See, I think they're gonna. I, we we need a looking for group app because if you get through there with bosses and you have your friends with you, you're likable to be better, faster, get more. Oh points. yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So you gotta go in with a group. Looking for group. But you have to make sure everyone <laughs> in your group has paid the money and achieved all the achievements and gotten all the mini games done. Anybody know where there's a raid? I would like to join a raid. <laughs> uh, um, all right. So what else do we got? That's a lot of stuff so far. We still have a little bit more, right? Um, I think that was pretty much it for the interactive stuff. And that's not including interactive stuff. I mean, I think there's also going to be some AAs hidden somewhere that you might be able to talk to. Mm. Um, in the play areas, but they would require having the band um, and the same thing for Donkey Kong when that comes later, maybe I think Japan might be getting it later. I know Orlando's getting it and I think Hollywood might be getting it later too, if they knock down some more sound stages, but that'll have a lot more interactive stuff too. So more reasons to sell the, the power up bands. That's cool. Um, but the only other thing I had, Oh, well they, they did announce some more stuff. I like what Terry Ku had to say, the chief creative officer for universal creative. He said, uh, Think of Super Nintendo World as a life-size living video game where you become one of the characters. You're not just playing the game, you're living the game. You're living the adventure. I'm punching Bobby. Yeah, that sounds fun. <laughs> and and then they they un- unveiled a music video for a song called We Are Born to Play, yeah. which is like, I, last time I checked, it was number 18 trending on YouTube. It's ridiculous. It's not even that good, but the uh, video is awesome. <gasps> Don't be mean. Yeah, it's a collaborate collaboration between internationally known dance music duo Galantis yeah, whoever that and is. global pop superstar Charlie XCX. Yeah, whoever that as is. As we all know. Yep, everybody knows that, right? I'm sure somebody does. I, I've, I've watched the video so many times now. The song is like ingrained into my brain. <laughs> <laughs> because I've been picking out picking it apart. First of all, it shows everyone when they get to the world wearing a, su- a Super Mario hat. Yeah, that's so cool. instantly. I'm thinking like cha-ching, cha-ching. They're going to sell a bajillion hats. Yes, yes, they are. <laughs> These are like Mickey Mouse ears. Everyone's going to want a Mario hat, especially after things like Mario Galaxy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, where the hat's like a character. Now, like, um, and if they did different colors or designs, oh, man. There's Luigi hat. I, they're going to sell these hats for like thirty nine ninety nine. You know it. Wario, they're going to sell so many. Wario hat. Actually, a Wario hat would be cool. Yeah, Waluigi yeah. Luigi hat. Wait, isn't Wario's purple, right? Am I remembering correctly? I think so. Yeah. I'm a gonna win. <laughs> so, 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 but yeah, wait, no, but, but, but the music video also, <clears throat> did you see the music video? I, I, it showed the ride vehicle from Mario Kart. Yeah, it's floating. So it's hovering, right? So I wonder how they're going to, how are they going to do that, Alicia? Hmm? How are they going to make you feel like you're hovering? I don't know. Rise of Resistance does a good job of making it feel like you're hovering if you just ignore all of the tire tracks on the ground. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say. <laughs> if you pretend there's not tire track, because there's no track, but there's tire Prince. tracks. Yeah, there's tire prints. <laughs> like, I, I, a lot of the, like the new Mario Kart 8 or whatever, it definitely, like the tires turn sideways and you kind of hover so you can fly up the wall and stuff. Yeah, like back to the so, future. <laughs> right. And even, exactly. And even the early, early, early leaked concept art for mario kart ride shows if you look really closely it shows the other riders in on the ride with the wheels sideways so i think that whole ride you're just supposed to be hovering interesting i want to see how they do that so i wasn't really all that excited for this land at first i was interested but i'm so curious about how this ride is going to work that 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 is what i'm excited for and then i'm also still just to go in yoshi because it's yoshi yeah i the we in in the aerial footage that someone posted on Twitter that um, you could see the ride vehicles are already on the track for the Yoshi Omnimover ride. Uh, they're just wrapped in plastic. Yeah, I saw them. They look like little pods. <laughs> you can still see that thick Yoshi butt, though. <laughs> yeah, you can. You can actually see. I, I could see the cutout, too, where you're going to sit kind of in them. Yes. So it looks fun. Um, and there's a giant Yoshi. and it, I don't know. I'm excited for that. It would be nice to have a nice relaxing ride to go on, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, I worry about 
the, the the capacity for that ride and the queue not being big enough. The queue for Mario Kart is massive. Like there's three, four, five hours worth of queue inside that building because that whole second floor is like queue. Do you think they're going to do the regular old standby queues? They're not going to try anything fancy and new like a virtual? Especially in Japan, I think it's just going to be standby queues. They might do something for the grand openings here in the States, but... Yeah, they're they're probably a little more respectful and patient than we are here. <laughs> exactly. Slightly. Maybe for for grand opening or whatever, they might do a special whatever, like, if the because the land is pretty small. Mm-hmm. So when Hogsmeade opened, eventually, you know, they had to cut it off for, you know, capacity reasons, and they they'll, or they'll give you a return pass, like saying, come back at this time because the land's too small. Mm-hmm. I think they might have to do something like that. But the actual rides themselves... They, they have fairly decent queues. I just worry that Yoshi um, still isn't going to be big enough for because those are the only two rides and Yoshi's uh, capacity is not as great as the other one. That's cool. I'm into it. Yay stuff. I didn't I didn't really expect all that interactive stuff that we just went over, though. Still, I'm still kind of floored by that. I expected some, but that's a lot. It's pretty neat that the music video like it, they they incorporated the actual CG models they created for the land, mm-hmm. but at the same time, they didn't really show anything for the land that's really there. They're like, there's a brief shot of the ride vehicles for Mario Kart, but they're in a completely like set, uh, made up setting that's not really on the ride. And they show everyone getting a hat, everyone getting a power up band, and everyone connecting it to an app. So like already, it's telling you like this is it. We're get excited. We're gonna play in the land, and it's like the best marketing material uh, without actually giving you any information. It's just like these are the things you can buy and get excited. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a theme song for you to get excited to. Yeah, it's hyping. It's hyping you up. Everyone's running around. It's chaos. Um, buy a hat, buy a power up band. <laughs> no, connect it to the app. According to the video, the hat is just going to appear upon my head. Thank you very much. Well, yeah, when <laughs> when you beg your parents for it, it just magically appears. That's how YouTube works. Oh, that's ridiculous. All right, <laughs> it puts it in your brain. It's it's the inception. It's planting a <laughs> seeds so that when you go to the land, you know, you're like I don't know why, but I need a hat. <laughs> <laughs> they had it in the video, mom. Yeah. That was in that music video. It was trending on YouTube. That's how I know it's important. <laughs> right. More details will be revealed in February in New York for some reason, because for, it's the center of the world, they said. For, for, in New York for Japan? For I think for Nintendo Worlds around the world. Okay. I think they're going to talk about a little bit about Hollywood. Maybe they'll actually admit. No. <laughs> like confess that no. Epic Universe is where our land is going in Orlando. I don't know. No. <laughs> they don't do that until the land's built and they tell you to pretend like you don't see it. Yeah. Well, they, they were not working alone on this one with Nintendo um, as their partner. You know, they might have, they might be forcing Universal's hand to actually announce things. Oh, uh, they've already, like, they announced it during this presentation. They, they made mention. Hold on, let's read, read the exact sentence. A miracle. Universal Studios Japan will be the first Universal theme park to feature Super Nintendo World, followed by Universal theme parks in Hollywood, Orlando, and Singapore. Yeah, but they don't say which one in Orlando. No, but they said it in the order in which I think they're opening, which is already more information than I expected them to give us. <laughs> All right, so what else do we what else did we find out? You oh, I didn't watch the video, the two minute video thing. What was that? Uh, everything we just said condensed into two minutes. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Done and done. I like it. If anyone wants to learn more about the rides coming to Super Nintendo World, I did just do the recent um, article and video about the Mario Kart ride featuring the scenes that we think that it'll have and a track layout. And um, that's on the Theme Park Stop YouTube channel. And if you're not, you should have been watching this on the YouTube channel because this podcast is going to have lots of visuals explaining what we're talking about whenever possible. Or listen to it and then watch it later. Or do like I do and listen to it yes. and watch it at work while you're doing work. <laughs> while you're supposed to be doing work? I can watch it out of the corner of my eye or while I'm on the phone with one ear butt in. And um, I think it was like last summer, some sometime last year, I also did a video on the Yoshi ride, which is a little easier to figure out because it's all outside mostly. And you can kind of see it from aerial photos. That was a good video. But the Mario Kart, the Mario Kart one, it's a little more hard to track down the rumors because it's all inside. <sighs> I can't wait. I'm so curious about that ride. 
So curious. Well, floating February. Hopefully, we'll we'll get some more information about Mario Kart in February, and we'll talk about well, that. There's a floating car now, so we better go straight up a wall. Yeah. See, that's. <laughs> I feel like the floating thing is almost. Uh, it's it's it's, pr- it's over promising now. I'm, I'm worried. Yeah, no, better be up a wall in that middle of all that. It does have a massive uh, lap bar, though. That that ride vehicle lap bar looks mass. It's so thick. I don't know. Lo- Maybe the. Rumored AR technology is built into the lap bar somehow, and there's like <laughs> buttons on it. I have to wonder if it's like Horizons. <laughs> I haven't brought up Horizons in a while. And like, <laughs> instead of individually, you all get a special item. You all four get to pick uh, uh, which special item you want, and then majority rules selects it. <laughs> Like four different things. Like, why would anyone pick mushroom? Like, I don't, you don't need the boots. You need, you want to pick the red shell. Come on. Of course you do. But there's probably some kind of controls on the on the lap I bar. I hope so. If it's Opal does too. I hope so. I think that's it for this episode. We kept it kind of quick. Yeah, I told you it was gonna be quicker than an hour. Told you. Yeah. Well, it helps that I talk fast, and I'm, and I'm still manic because I'm still excited about last <laughs> night's announcement. <laughs> I'd, I've been up all day drinking caffeine and reading and writing articles. You sound like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exhausted. I have no idea how I'm talking anymore. It's great. Great. Before we go, be sure to check out that recent premium podcast we did with the 2019 recap and our theme park predictions for 2020 on patreon.com slash theme park stop. Yeah, are we? We're going to do some more of the his, the history podcast, right? Uh, the rides. Yes, we're going to get back into that, um, talking about all of the rides at Universal Studios Florida that have ever existed and closed, even the dumb ones. Also, uh, Bobby has volunteered to do an episode where we're going to talk about um, our predictions for things uh, that he's been warned he can't bring up Fast and Furious. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't talk about that. That ride doesn't exist. No. Sorry. Is that it? Yeah, I think so. And now we gotta go to build a bear and build a baby Yoda. You have to breathe first, and then you can go. I'm gonna take a nap, just a quick you thirty minute nap, and I'll be good for another two days. <laughs> you are not falling asleep anytime soon. <laughs> I don't think it's possible with all these empty cans of soda I'm looking oh at. My God. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Craziness. Uh, happy twenty twenty, everyone. Yay. Save me. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys.